On November 5, 1975, Travis Walton was in close proximity to a flying saucer that ultimately shot at him some kind of blue laser. That energy discharge nearly took his life. After getting hit by the discharge, he was taken on board the flying saucer for a full five-day period. The events leading up to him getting abducted were witnessed by six co-workers. This all took place in the Apache Sitz Greaves National Forest in Arizona. Walton's case is the most well-documented alien abduction incident that we know of. I was recently researching this event in preparation for a video on Travis Walton when it dawned on me that this event may have been engineered to happen in contrast to what many people believe, which is Walton was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time and the discharge from the flying saucer was not intentional. Let's examine some of the details of this case that leads me to believe that indeed Walton's abduction on the night of November 5th, 1975 may have been engineered by the alien intelligence. For starters, Walton and his co-workers spotted a mysterious glimmer of light coming through the trees ahead while they were driving. Now, it goes without saying that Walton and his crew members would not have pursued the flying saucer unless they first made visual contact with it. This begs the question, could the flying saucer have cloaked itself? And if yes, why wasn't it doing so? The second question is, why did it allow Travis Walton and the crew to drive so closely to it? Were the occupants of the flying saucer unaware that getting too close to it could cause the saucer to emit a dangerous discharge? Were they unaware about how their flying saucer functions? I really kind of doubt it. The flying saucer could have easily taken off as the crew was approaching it to avoid any possible dangers to the logging crew, but it did no such thing. At this point, one may interject and say that there is no way the occupants of the flying saucer could have anticipated that someone would have gotten out of the car and gotten so close to it as Walton did. That strikes me as a ridiculous sentiment. It seems like an obvious thing a person might do to investigate something so unusual in the sky. I suspect that the flying saucer strategically positioned itself so that the logging crew would see it and as a result would try to get a closer look at it. I also think it's possible that the bolt of energy that emanated from the craft that struck Travis Walton was done intentionally. So, if this whole episode was all done intentionally, what was the point? Well, to answer that, I'd first ask you to watch my videos titled Why Aliens Decide When Disclosure Happens and The Great Shift. How Disclosure Will Transform Our World before watching this video any further. That is if you haven't seen them yet. They are both linked in the description below. Here are my tweets that started getting me wondering about Travis Walton's abduction. As recounted by George Knapp, Whitley Strieber has said, the others are the architects of the secrecy. This position resonates strongly with my own. Consequently, we can't rule out that the whole Travis Walton experience was engineered as an ideal encounter to influence the disclosure timeline. When you consider how advanced these beings are, could they really have not avoided what happened to Walton? It's something you have to consider. Andreas responds, If they, for and against humanity, have godlike powers, then they definitely seem to be influencing the direction of mankind and the secrecy. In the book Messengers of Deception, Jack Vallée makes an interesting point about the sheer number of sightings around the world. He basically said that if sightings were simply the result of alien spacecraft, that happened to be surprised by human witnesses who wandered onto the scene of their visitation, such as what happened to Travis Walton and his crew, then that would actually translate to there being three million sightings within a two decade period. The reason I say two decades is because Valet did some number crunching and concluded that based upon the number of sightings that were recorded within a two decade period, there would have to be approximately 3 million sightings when you account for all the various relevant factors. Here is how he punched the numbers to reach his conclusion. He looked into his research files and discovered he had 2,000 verified cases of close encounters from every country in the world that took place over approximately 20 years. Now, 2,000 doesn't sound like a big number, 
But what you have to factor in is the following as Jack Vallée explains. The number of potential witnesses is severely reduced during sleep hours. When you account for this, now we have 30,000 visitations. These sightings in his records only account for those that are reported. Independent studies have demonstrated that only 1 in 10 sightings ever get reported. Accounting for this, now we have 300,000 visitations happening within a two decade time span. The Earth's population isn't distributed evenly. If alien spacecraft visitations were evenly distributed among the Earth, this means that, conservatively speaking, there would be a multiple of 10 times more visitations than have been established. This takes us to a whopping 3 million visitations. Valet makes the argument that the sheer number of verified unexplained sightings is evidence that UFOs are not alien spacecraft. He writes regarding this. This is one of the little recognized facts of the UFO problem that any theory has yet to explain. The theory of random visitations does not explain it. Either the UFOs select their witnesses or they are something entirely different from space vehicles. In either case, their appearances are staged. I find Valet's argument compelling and I believe that at the very least, most sightings are staged. I believe most ET vehicles that enter our atmosphere are unmanned and some of them are probably holograms. Whether a person is having a sighting of a physical UFO or that of a holographic UFO, I believe a major purpose of their pre presence is so that human beings witness them. Now, why would the alien presence want to be strategically seen by humanity? Well, the same reason that the alien presence wanted Travis Walton to be abducted on November 5th, 1975. According to my theory, alien supercomputer theory, sightings and contact scenarios are at least partly designed to impact the timeline of when disclosure happens. The interaction of the phenomenon with humanity is a cosmic chess game played by the phenomenon which ultimately does have godlike powers because of their uses of quantum computers and their highly developed consciousness. While I contend it would be foolish to assume the purpose of sightings and contact is one dimensional, I'm still led to believe that a significant motivation behind contact and sightings is to control the exact date disclosure occurs. I'm not going to give a thorough explanation of how sightings and contact scenarios impact when disclosure happens, and how the alien intelligence orchestrates this astounding feat. I covered that pretty well in my first video covering my theory, Alien Supercomputer Theory. Link to that video is in the description. Suffice to say that every sighting and contact scenario influences, by necessity, when disclosure will happen. Because eventually there will be so much accumulated evidence on the alien presence that governments will have no choice but to come clean on the reality. Okay, okay, we got it, Mr. UFO Jesus. It's the aliens that are the architects of the secrecy, and as a result, are also the architects of when disclosure happens. And the most significant way they control the disclosure timeline is by orchestrating sightings and contact scenarios. Fine. So, what's the end game? Ah, I thought you'd never ask. Before I go into what the end game could be, I want to make it clear that this presentation is taking on an optimistic view. The component I feel most confident about in my theory is that the disclosure date is not even remotely random and is being inexplicably controlled by a higher intelligence. Perhaps that intelligence is a collective of extraterrestrials. Whether or not this intelligence that is controlling when disclosure occurs has in mind what's in the best interest of humanity is a decision you're going to have to make yourself. I really don't know. Humanity has been influenced in multifaceted ways over eons by ET civilizations. The motivation for this are complex. As it stands, there are worlds all over our vast universe that consist of sentients like us that are not yet part of a greater galactic community. It's part of the culture of the universe for primitive sentience to be guided by more advanced civilizations. It's just the way that it is. It's how our universe works. But this begs the question. If the ET civilizations were involved with our world for eons, why didn't they reveal themselves sooner 
in a more concrete way and help us by giving us technology that would vastly improve our existence? The answer is that they have a deeper understanding of reality than to allow for that. They are intimately aware that part of the reason that primitive sentience exists in the universe is to learn difficult and necessary lessons. And these lessons must span over eons through many, many incarnations. Had they intervened in a concrete way sooner, they would have disrupted that. They also know, somehow, when this string of lessons are finished. And we will know when that is too. Because the mark of the end of those kind of lessons is when the disclosure event takes place. Dude, uh, did you just go full Wilcock? Well, kind of. Dude, never go full Wilcock. Fine. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop. Link is in the description. Or you can even become a patron. Or you can just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. video.